Welcome to On the Edge with April Mahoney Brains. Here, this is the spot where the conversations are pointed, the guests are sharp, and the responses are never dull. Did you bring your thinking caps? Because it's time to put them on. Because the conversation starts now. (laughs) So what we are going to talk about is all good things you, because you have been in the media, I mean, just everywhere. So you now you have you have a podcast? I do. Okay, you have a podcast and you have a video show on YouTube too? Uh YouTube and Facebook, yes. I go live every Thursday. Okay. Luncheon with Lisa. Luncheon with Lisa? Yeah. All right. What you serving up? Luncheon with Lisa. What's it about? Luncheon with Lisa is actually about highlighting uh businesses people, places, and things, anything going on in the world. Um, I like to sh- kind of shine a spotlight on people um, and give them a little um, exposure um, so that people can recognize them. I actually highlight a lot of the people that I support, um, businesses, things that I purchase. Um, I put them on blast and um, I just love showing, um, I love people's journeys. I love sharing their stories. I'm not starstruck or anything. I just, I think that everybody has a story um, that's interesting. And I'm always curious to see how people got where they are. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I get you. Because the journey is real. Welcome to On the Edge with April Mahoney Brains here. Right here is the spot. (laughs) Where the conversation is pointed, the guests are sharp, and the responses are never dull. And we have today Lisa Dove Washington. If you haven't seen her on social media, then you haven't been logged on because she is the queen of everything. She's got a great podcast. She's got a great YouTube channel. She loves to highlight and feature people, places, and things, much like the things I do on the edge because there's a story there. And we're all into emotional intelligence and relationship capital. That's the big investment now, Brains. That's really what's working. That's what's doing it to it because we don't have nothing else. You know, We don't know what's going to happen. 15 minutes from now, somebody could walk in the room with the cotton being COVID, and there you are. There so you we're going to talk about that and a whole lot more. Welcome to the show, Lisa Dove. Thank you. I'm happy to be on the edge with April. All right <laughs> now. All right now. Tell my brains a little bit about you and how you show up in the world, Precious. Uh, I am a mom. I'm a wife. Um, I'm a, a creative is like how I like to describe myself. I love all things creative. Um, I've been creating since I was younger. Um, I'm, I also have a love for words and writing. Um, so all of these things kind of manifested into everything that I do today, um, meaning an online magazine, Dove Style Magazine, the online show Luncheon with Lisa, because I love to talk and have conversations with people. Um, and I'm also a creative in the sense that I'm a crafter. So um, I have crafts around me, wreaths and, and, and things that just kind of add and en- enhance um, your presence. So I love all of those things. And so uh, were you surprised when I sent you something that was burlap? I, I loved it. Um, <laughs> most people don't get it. They like, yeah. what is burlap? Yeah. Um, but I love burlap. So I was absolutely surprised in a wonderful way because oh, yeah. yeah, you were one of few who actually get the burlap thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it's very durable. Yes. It's very durable and it's very unique. Yes. You wear, you can dress it up, you can dress it down, it just depends. So I yes. hope that that bag I sent you ends up being full of money. <laughs> yes, I have it with me. I keep it close to me. I don't have that many burlap bags, so that is one of in my collection. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm a crafter too, but you know, crafting is expensive. Yes, it is. It is. It is. And I have and you know what <laughs> makes me mad is when I make jewelry. And I need five more beads, girl, and I got to go buy a whole nother strand. Here we go again. <laughs> but you're not mad about it on some sense, though, because you're like, okay, well, then I, that keeps you going, actually. It, okay. It's the <laughs> craft now you crack. Got <laughs> it's, the, it's the craft crack. And my husband is like, okay, so what are you into now? You're painting one day. You are uh, doing jewelry another day. You are writing poetry. But I love that because that, it's that keeps me going like you said it's something to look forward to 
I always Absolutely. ask myself, my guest gave me these two mantras and I say them all the time. And Lisa, they're magic. It's like, how can it get any better than this? Hey. And what else is possible? I like that. Girl, and I say it over and over and things manifest like you would not believe. Are you a manifester as well? Absolutely, absolutely. I, some, sometimes I don't do so well with it because, you know, we got to be careful with our words and what we ask for. Um, and it took me a while to understand the power of words, which is kind of like how one of my books was birthed, The Power Shut Up. But The Power Shut Up has become my, that's my go-to. Right. Um, language is everything. And I think people sleep on the fact that your words have power. So you got to be careful how you talk to not only other people, but to yourself. To yourself and to your spirit, to the universe, <clears throat> because it is very, very powerful. And I love that, the power to shut up. Because I, I, I had a little kerfuffle with somebody. You probably seen my little Facebook post. Oh my God, you just, wait a minute, April. You just made my day, okay? So I'm a words person. And I have only heard one other person say kerfuffle. <laughs> and... <laughs> I absolutely love it because my friends think, oh gosh, did she go with the big, as my husband said, using the big words, but oh, no, you yo, yo, see, we should be in the same city because my husband goes, don't be coming at me with those big $25 <laughs> words. And I'm That's like, right. $25 words, really? Okay. All right. I got that. I got that. But yeah, somebody got a little crunchy with me, but they didn't know when to shut up, Lisa. Mm. I had already backed down. You know, just and not wanting to. I didn't feel that I was wrong, right. but whatever. You know, I just wanted to shut it down. You can win. That's fine. And just keep it moving. But girl, they want to poke the bear. They want to stir the pot. They just want to keep going, keep going. And another thing, and another thing. And see, that's why people get knocked in the noodle. Because they don't know when to be quiet. Shut up. Shut up. What made yep. you write that book? Actually, I was going to be very transparent. I was going through th some things in my marriage um, and I felt like I wasn't being heard. Um, I didn't think I was wrong in what I was saying, um, but I still nonetheless was not getting any kind of what I felt was some kind of um, progress or something going on. So I had a friend of mine, actually three people um, actually confirmed the message in within the same 24 hours. One being my mother that told me I needed to mm -hmm. um, stop saying what mm -hmm. I was saying and try to try to word this differently because I wasn't being heard. Another was a friend of mine who was speaking to me about my marriage that actually told me to shut up. I was talking too much. And after I did the head swirl, <laughs> like, who are you talking to? Um, and got out of my feelings, I knew it was coming right, from a place right, of love. Right. And, and, um, Stacey Lattisaw was another person who's a friend of mine, and she took it to the Bible for me um, and explained to me the power of words and being quiet. Um, and that was my, that whole 24 hours was the day that I said, okay, let me give this a go. Mm -hmm. um, Cause I had fought so hard to get my voice. And now I was offended that people were telling me not to right. use it. Um, but I tried it and it worked. Um, and from there, I continued to try it. Co of course, use the error at times. I'm not perfect at it. Um, and from there, mm -hmm. the book kind of manifested and I learned so much. It changed my life. So, you know, and being still, you learn so much more about being still. But women, we do that. You know, yep. we go. We just keep going and going and going. And <laughs> my husband will tell me in a minute. He said, all right, I got that. I heard you. Right. Then that's that's time for you to just okay let him process it okay i don't want to hear that no more or with your girlfriends you try to be a good friend i don't want to hear this two or three times we done talked about it we done went through it we done come up with an action item now whether you want to do it or not but every time we get together i don't want you sucking the oxygen out the room and i have to talk to myself too i have to say you know what april shut this down because it's also the neuro linguistic programming it's the conversation that we are having in our own head. Absolutely. That can definitely Absolutely. be a stumbling block. But that's hard for us because, number one, we're orators. We definitely. communicate and we talk for a living, you know. So what is it that you want to really bring out of your guest? And what is your vetting process for the guests on your show? Because I know you're not going to just have anybody on there. 
Right. Well, what I do is, I mean, I have a lot of people that reach out to me, but I'm looking for some, um, for guests who can empower, inspire, and enlighten. So I really, my goal for the show, for the magazine, for everything that I do is that people walk away after they enter the space that I'm in, whether it's the show or the magazine, and they learn something that they didn't know prior um, that actually pushes them to the next level up. Um, so I am really one of those positive people. Communicator is communicating is my jam, um, but I like it to be productive. I want you to gain something that you can use. Um, that's what I gain from things that I listen. That is not always information you want to hear, but information that you can be open enough to say, okay, let me let me do a self check. And then see how I can better myself going forward. So that's really what the goal for my guests. I want them to bring something to the table that people can use. That's what I do. And, you know, I bring a little controversy because I don't always agree with my guests. I tell them we can agree to disagree and not be disagreeable. That's but some right. things I ain't going for. Right. <laughs> you know, just some things I ain't going for. And then, too, we have to take this very, very seriously because now we are an independent news source. Absolutely. People are coming to us and they're hoping that we are not just sitting here jaw jacking, mm -hmm. that we are really bringing content that they can use, asking the questions. Uh, and a lot of times my guests, I ask them questions that they've probably never even asked themselves. They get that mm -hmm. aha moment. And it's so fun. But you have to be careful of what's going out there because I don't want to be one of those gossip sources. I really don't. Absolutely. Absolutely. We got plenty of people doing that. We got plenty of people hating and I work in entertainment. And when I see these people, you know, take their hair piece off, sometimes take their teeth out, <laughs> take their <laughs> shoes off, smoke a cigarette, drink a beer. They just want to be regular old people. They don't want to be this, this celebrity all the time. So what do I look like snapping a picture? Girl, a lot of times I'm with celebrities. I don't even take my camera because I don't want to be tempted. Mm -hmm. I got you. Yeah, I mean, and, and that's the thing. I, I mean, I have, you have made friends through having the magazine and the, the show. I've made friends who are celebrity or whatever, but they're my friends. So you don't see me talk about them a lot because I really cherish the friendships and that's the um the journey. I like, they're, everybody is just our people. Um, and we've all just taken different paths um, that are for us. And I like to find out like what, what, what about you and the same vice versa? They talk to me about like, how do you get into what you do? And, mm -hmm. and we just, we talk as friends. And I think people sometimes kind of idolize people that are in certain spaces. And I kind of like for my platforms to bring it back down to everybody is just regular people that have gone in different directions, depending on where, you know, God wants to take you. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and it's, you shouldn't be idolizing people, but just kind of respecting their path. And everybody has a story. So mm -hmm. as long as it's positive, it's not bringing negative. I am like you. It's certain subjects that I might not necessarily agree. As long as we can have a comfortable conversation, um, if it gets too ratchet or whatever, it's kind of like, no, that's not, that's not my brand. Mm -hmm. That's not how I want to be put out in the world. Because I even tell my children, they're grown now, but it's like, look, everything you do reflects back on everybody. Exactly. You're exactly. You know, my, my daughter made that mistake. <laughs> we, I went on vacation, you know, and my family on the East coast is a little part snickety. And they said, well, why didn't Chanel come? And I said, oh, you know, she has some things to do. She was going to a convention or whatever. My, my cousin came to me. She said, oh, no, this is why she didn't come. There's a picture of my daughter with a, a baby bump, a big pregnancy bump. And I'm like, well, that wasn't going on when I left the house. She had went with one of her she went with one of her friends that was pregnant and thought it was cute and funny. And she put it on, but put it, on, you know. So now the whole family whispering and gossiping and all that. It's the littlest thing. It's the littlest thing that can absolutely turn, uh, you know. A mountain into a molehill. It sure can. And I have. Oh, is that, did I say that wrong? A molehill into a mountain? <laughs> yeah. One of them. Look, I mean, yeah, the smallest thing, but at the same time, it, it can flip. I mean, you never know what's going to, somebody is going to grab onto, especially because you don't know their energy. We talked about energy before. And people have all kinds of agendas out there. They might not mm -hmm. even know you and have an agenda for your journey. And they're looking for that one thing that they can run with that can make them 
feel good about themselves. So we got to mm -hmm. be careful what we give them to use. Right. And this keyboard courage. Yes. You know, yes. you wouldn't dare say that to my face. You wouldn't say that to right. my face. I scratch Absolutely. your eyes out. <laughs> Absolutely. But they can do all of that kind of stuff. And it, it's, you know, it, it's ridiculous. It's really ridiculous. Let me uh, ask you, what's going on in the magazine space? I went in the grocery store. I went to get, I think, a Essence magazine. Girl, that was my Bible. I had everyone since probably the age of 11 years old and saved them. Uh, and now it looks like a pamphlet. Mm. There's no content in there. There's, you know, tons of advertisement. But where's the fashion? Where's the feature? Where's, you know, where's the horoscope? Where are the things that we really look for? So in the online space, how is that for a magazine? Well, I, you know, in 2012, I actually was writing for a, um, I was asked um, by someone who had a magazine out in LA, as a matter of fact, um, Celebrity Charity Magazine, to do a um, article on Martin Luther King's dedication. Um, and I'm, I love the whole journey of Martin Luther King. My daughter did as she went through school. So I was like, absolutely. And my cousin kind of connected us and because I was a writer. Um, I was an English major in college and that kind of thing. So I went and had a, it was um, an amazing experience. I was able to interview um, Joseph E. Lowry, who was my pastor from back as a child. And I was also ab um, able to interview one of the Freedom Riders. Um, so that was, that's major to me. I mean, print, mm -hmm. writing something about with them is like major. So I was like, absolutely easy, yes. And as I went through that journey, she had some other things she was working on. And I had these articles with people and I had nothing to do with them. I said, people are going to think I'm absolutely crazy that I'm doing interviews just just because I don't have nothing to do. So I decided to start my own magazine. But I wanted my magazine to actually have different things in it. So I had things like... Um, the editorials that are controversial sometimes give people something to talk about, think about. So it wasn't always all the fluff. But at the same time, I had comic strips that were um, created out of um, photography because um, mm -hmm. it was different. Um, I wanted something different. I wanted things that would intrigue people to come back. Um, so I didn't want that traditional, you know, all the lights, camera, glitz, pretty pictures, flowers, things. I wanted things that people could kind of talk about, conversations that people could talk about. Um, so I had different things in there. We talked about, um, actually, I'm looking to do more book reviews um, oh, and, and things. And things like that. Some recipes, maybe some good, absolutely, maybe some absolutely. good crafting tips. Cause you know, crocheting is coming back, girl. I've been trying, I've been doing it. <laughs> I, I used to crochet, it. I can't do it now, but yeah, well, those I'm are the kind of things I want to get back to. I'm gonna come out with a new podcast. I love it. I am, and I'm going to uh feature. I'm just going to tell it, you know, because Lord and already ordained it and blessed it. Uh, I am going to do arts and entertainment. Okay. This arts and entertainment, underdiscovered talents like uh, reading book excerpts, doing book reviews, uh, people that are trying to get their music out, short stories. Yes. Um, I have all of that. That poetry. is wonderful. All I love that. it. I love it. I love it. Because um, I just think that we need to get back to the basics. Um, that's what intrigued me to write and read back in the day. And I just think we need to get back to that. We're putting too much of that um, stuff in our head that's you know, all that glam and fashion. So we're trying to I know, mimic but you know it. What? And, and I, I love y'all. Y'all know I love you, but there's only <laughs> so much energy, metaphysical, entrepreneurs, coaching. It's the same old thing. That's why I'm really interested in your backstory, how you got there. Yes. And what is your secret sauce for success? What is one of your biggest wins outside of, you know, writing your book and the, 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 um, and authoring and publishing? What is one of your biggest wins in life? Um, you know what? Don't uh, tell me them kids, girl. I know. I no, know you first. know, I was I was a proud empty nester. People would be like, "Oh my gosh, don't you miss them? Did you cry?" No, I didn't. I was just like, "Oh my goodness, they out the house." <laughs> um, <laughs> I had a good time with it. My son actually graduated from college um in December, but 
we enjoyed our time. But what I did gain from it was understanding um, who Lisa is. Um, and it took me a while. I had to get my kids out the house, be able to focus on myself. So I've actually learned how to understand that it's okay to kind of love on me, spoil me, mm -hmm. um, do the things that I enjoy doing. And I think when I was younger, I didn't really get that. I mean, I did it at times, but I didn't really understand the value of it um, and how it actually enhances my life. So when I don't find peace and I'm thinking I'm doing all the right things, so why am I not you know, at peace and happy that it has nothing to do with anybody else, but everything to do with me? Um, so I'm able to better center myself. So when I feel like I'm a little off, I know how to bring it back um, and not blame everybody else um, mm -hmm. and, and work with Lisa. That's the best thing I've learned in all that I've been, been doing. Well, you know, now that you are an empty nester and you had, you know, self-disclosed that you had had some challenge in your marriage and you learned how to be quiet. Uh, <laughs> and so, you know, again, I've been married 37 years and it's congratulations. Thank you. And it's been some work. Yes. But now, and we're empty nesters too. So now what are some of the most romantic things that you do? I'm about, I'm about to hook him up. I got all these cards for Valentine's oh, Day. I'm well, like a scavenger now, <laughs> Well, I'm actually a romantic at heart. I love, and it takes, it's simple things to me. We are skaters. So some Ooh, of the things that I love, love to You go to the roller skate, girl? You go to skating ring? We, we still go skating. Absolutely. 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 Every Sunday. As a matter of fact, I met my husband 33 years ago in the skating rink and we oh, still go yeah. to that skating rink. And I just watch him on men's only and I'm just right back where I was. It's the I, wonderful. Well, you know, we got a skating rink here and it's beautiful. It's outdoors. And, oh, and it's awesome. a roller skating ring. A roller skating ring outdoors. I'll show you some pictures of it later on. But you know what? <clears throat> Oh it's not goodness. it's not like it was in the days of LA. Girl, they don't have okay. no trios. They don't have no oh, ladies no. backwards. They don't oh, have no, no couples. They ain't calling none of the and I'm I told the DJ, I said, look, let me give you an education. <laughs> let me let me give you a, a skating ring ghetto card. Cause you ain't doing this right. He looked at me. I said, Do you start calling some of these things and watch what happened, girl? I got the skating ring on and pop it now. Oh, that's right. I can't. I couldn't imagine a skating session without couples only and women. Uh, the women only, the men yeah. only. Mm -mm. They they wasn't doing. Oh my that. gosh! Yes, yeah, skating is right our love. We absolutely and and actually, you know, people might think this is a little, you know, lame or whatever. But I just enjoyed the personal time we had to watch a movie. Um, we do simple things like turn tick TikTok is just the most hilarious thing ever so we can turn tiktok on and watch it till two in the morning oh, just wow. laughing laughing um i'm amazed at what people will go out but you know i'm, I'm not mad at them because i think it's kind of open people up like hey you know <laughs> it's okay to be a little silly sometimes it's okay to have some fun and just enjoy life so those are the simple things i like but the best thing i like about um the romantic times is going in the backyard lighting one of those logs um, and sitting around the fire pit um, and just talking. Um, conversation is is my jam. Even with him, I know it drives him crazy, but I love to sit. Well, we went to the Grand talk. Canyon and we played games. Oh. You know, uh, it was it was beautiful. And, you know, we played games like I'm going on a trip and you all these things that you have to keep repeating. We named all the places that we had been on vacation. I couldn't believe it. We named all 50 states, all the continents. So there's a lot that you can do. But what I like I to love do it. is I love to play dominoes. And oh, I do you? And I like to shoot dice. <laughs> okay. Okay. But my husband, he says it's not ladylike to shoot dice. And I would say, yes, it is. If you know how. <laughs> He says, I'm not going to do it. You know, right. you know, he don't want to do it because, you know, he come up with this big bank, take little bank. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it depends on who's banking the most. But it's a right. lot of fun. It's great to be silly. Like you said, just to sit there and cuddle. I'm so sad that the football season is almost over because I love that. Yes. Uh, love to cook. You know, just it's the simple pleasures in life. And people have extracted themselves from that especially with COVID that to me, this was God speaking with a megaphone saying, Hey, you know what? Absolutely. You, need to slow, you need to slow it down, pay attention. Cause I'm talking to you and I'm not just talking to yep. you, you I'm talking to the entire world. Are y'all hearing me? 
Girl, they're not hearing him. They're so combative and argumentative. They're not learning from it. But I'm learning my lessons. I'm writing them down. And I am. Hey, you're not going to steal my blessings. I said, you know, I really, I, th I agree with you. It was his way of saying you all need to have several seats um, and, and, and take heed to what I'm showing you. I, and it's sad to watch because sometimes I think in the beginning of COVID, the first two weeks was um, actually hell in my house because I was like, what in the world is going on? in this world I'm living in. And I just, you know, and, and all, <laughs> all jokes aside, in the beginning, the first two weeks, I, I called my mom and said, I think they're trying to kill me up in here. They're not listening to me. Mm. I'm telling them to get masks or whatever. We got to it. But in the first two weeks, I was terrified. Um, but then I had to go back to the I had to go back to the good book. The Bible was everything to me, but I lost my well, way. Good, and I good for you, because I had to put mine down. I got into Revelations. And I was scared to death. You know, I oh, yeah. had just imagined that I was going to be up in glory, fluffing out my wings, girl, trying to get my wings fan, trying to figure out my next destination, who I was going to come down and perch on their shoulder and bless. <laughs> and I'm living in everything that is yeah. being said. Many plagues yep. and, you know, the, the people not identifying with their identity and, you know, parents fighting one another and the upheaval in the government. Just and, and people figuring out that, that, you know what I figured out? Um, and I said this to my husband when we kind of got to a space where we were good. I said, you know what I'm figuring out? That most people do not like themselves. Um, and then we had COVID where you were stuck in the house with you. And <laughs> you didn't know what to do. It was like, oh my goodness, I have to stay in here and, and live with me. And I think it was the wake up call to kind of get, get real with you, self check you, what you don't like about you. Um, and I think people didn't realize that it was them until they were stuck in the house with them and were like, oh, or the parents didn't like know. Me. Parents didn't right. know their children. Right. And, they, right. and the kids thinking that their parents are super smart. And don't understand why they don't understand the math. And people have, um, they they are unemployed for real because they don't yeah. want to go back to the traditional workspace. Right. <laughs> and I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest with you. I was in the kitchen and I said, oh my God, I got to go all the way into my studio because I got an interview with Lisa Dove, Washington. <laughs> I said, I can't miss it. My husband goes, he said, well, you'd be fired if you had to leave the house and go to a, a, a corporate job. I don't know if I have the the chutzpah. I don't yeah. I don't, I don't have the moxie. I don't have the energy to go out into the world into a corporate office space. They beat and right. fired me within a couple of weeks. <laughs> because but you have to structure yourself and I tell entrepreneurs this all the time. Don't get it twisted. I give myself office hours cuz I was derailed. Yes. I was doing too much. I was up two, three o'clock in the morning. I had gained 25, 25 pounds and it wasn't cute because I was snacking and eating. Circadian rhythm was off. Brains, you have to understand being an entrepreneur is one of the hardest jobs you can ever have. Yeah. You got to discipline yourself. You got to yes. generate the business. You got to have office hours, step away from your desk and take a lunch break, get yes. paid, pay your bills, pay your taxes, you know, and be on the real. What are some of the things that you recommend and you suggest to entrepreneurs in this space? Um, since I'm a dual, I have a full-time career that I'm looking forward to uh, retiring in about three years, but I love the entrepreneur space, but I had to learn the word no, big time. Um, and not just no to other people, no to me. Um, I tended to say yes to everything. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. Sure, I will. Um, and I was wearing myself out. Um, and the thing you mentioned about time, time management and changing your schedule, I had to learn the hard way that I was way too accessible, not because I don't want to help people and be there and answer questions, but in order to be productive, I was pouring so much out and I had nothing left when it was time to get to that peace with my family and that kind of thing. So now it's like at a certain hour, I, it's a no, I, I cannot, um, I will get back with you when because I was depleting all of my energy for self so that was the biggest lesson I learned you do have to pace yourself um and it's okay to say no it's okay what do you think about women in this entrepreneurial space being afraid to make the ask and not having the ability to close on a deal well I, I don't 
understand the concept necessarily of being scared. I know being nervous sometimes, depending on who you're coming up across to, to, to seal the deal. Um, but I'm a questions person. I'm never scared of a question. I'm never scared of an ask. Um, I just think that women need to, to be more confident in knowing that, I mean, what is the worst that can happen except you get that no? Um, and then you move on to the next. I think a lot of times the no just blows us away and then we're just kind of defeated so we don't do it again. But I'm one of them people that it may be a good thing, may not, but I am repetitious in my ass. So mm -hmm. I will just keep going and uh, going. No. Makes and me hungry. going. Absolutely. I mean, even when you're looking for a job, whether it's entrepreneurship or regular, I have to even tell my daughter and my son when they're out there, look, okay, you're going to get no's, keep going. You, It's, it's going to take 50 ass for one yes. You got to just keep doing it. Y'all, the, the scale is off. You all, your calculator's not working. You can't do one and get one. It just, the, the math doesn't work that way. Right. So you and, just got to keep pushing. And the word no is nothing but the word on spelled backwards. Hey, how about that? I didn't even you know? think about that. Yeah, so you got you to gotta turn it on. And, you know, my mother used to always tell me, she said, baby, if you got everything you absolutely wanted, she said, your life would be a hot mess. So That's that true. no is wonderful. I did that, uh, was it last year? Not last year, the year before. It was my season of no. I said a lot more mm -hmm. no's than I did yes. I was establishing boundaries. Mm -hmm. And I accepted no a lot easier. No doesn't mean that, you know, something personal against you. They just may not be with it. They can't afford it. They don't like it. They don't have right. enough information about it. So don't be afraid of a no. But women, we have Absolutely. to step up and we have to ask. Know your value. Look and see what other people are doing. When people ask you to make an investment in what they're doing, if you can do it, you should do it. Money is fluid. Absolutely. It's energy. You have to recycle it. Uh, you know, me now volunteering, I had to get, you know, pulled back on that too, because I was like you, I would overextend myself. Mr. Magnificent mm -hmm. said, uh, uh, what you do <laughs> is you only volunteer for maybe two or three projects a year and you give them a block of hours. Okay. So now if I work on a project, I'll give them 80 hours. And you better use them wisely. You want me on the phone, right. you want me at the front desk, you want me to run errands, but you best believe that the clock is ticking because right. someone else's project will turn into your project. And then you become snarky. You get mad, you know. Oh, that part. Yeah, all of that. Absolutely. When they sit back doing all of this and you doing all of this, it doesn't work. Absolutely. And I'm glad you said that because that's what happens. You you put so much into some someone else that you become you, you now you're working for them and they're doing their thing. And that's why I make sure with my team that we kind of balance each other off. So even with them, I know they have other projects, other things going on. So it's kind of like, okay, how can we balance this? What can I do to help you? Because I don't want to be the only one that's doing this. Um, and that seems to work with my team. And plus, I just appreciate my team. I think a lot of times we go out here as entrepreneurs and we either think we can do it all by ourselves, no, um, which can't. wears us out, or no, we get people in our on our team that aren't there. They're not on our team. Um, so you have to be, you know, use your discernment and get people surrounding you that can grow from you and you can glean from them as well. And once you got somebody who's really on your team and wants to see you win and you want to see them win, y'all going to work together and make it happen. But it's, it's hard, but people think they can do it all by themselves. I needed a team. I needed a team. I needed a team too. And I had to hire where I was weak, where there was, you know, places that I couldn't fill in the gap. If you want to be successful. If you right. want to be successful. Absolutely. So what do you do? How do you pour into yourself? How do you renew yourself? How do you find inspiration when you're not crafting or, you know, with, with, with your Mr. Magnificent or with your kids? What do you do for Lisa? What I do for Lisa, I like to go away. Like, and, and, and I understand that sometimes you can go to, you know, somewhere to a conference and do this kind of, I literally like to go away, check out. Um, not be available and block my mind of anything that's work related. Mm -hmm. um, Aruba would be my spot um, always. Never been there. The time. I love Aruba and it's not really? much there, but it's absolutely surreal. Um, I like a space where I can just, 
I like spaces for me where I can clear my mind and and not worry, not I I struggle with this um because my mind just is always working. It's right. always on the next project, what what I can do. Something's like, oh man, I know I can do it. But I like to separate myself from all of the, the you know, the chaos and just think about much of nothing. I, I love wow. being on the water. Um, it's something about the water that kind of just embraces me. Um, so anything that takes me away from the noise, um, I like to remove myself from the noise. Uh, I, I love, I used to love reading a lot. I don't do it as much. I'm more publishing at this point, but that's one of the things on my list to do is to, to read more. I just, I, I need to let go of all of the mess. Um, so you know what's a good read? I'm reading right uh -huh. now, Will Smith. His book, his autobiography. Will. Really? Okay. You know, I know him and Jada, but I, I didn't know, but I didn't, you know, I've worked with them. Uh, right. But as far as to read his story, it is, it's amazing. It's really amazing. Wow. I'm going to have to check that out. Yeah, it is I'm good. Sure. I've been doing a lot of audio books lately. Um, I haven't tried that. I haven't tried it, that. You know what? What I've learned to do again is multitask. I can listen to that. Like I, nutrition. Nutrition is boring for me to sit there and do, but when I'm listening to it, the voice inflection, then I look down over okay. at those little cupcakes or whatever, and I push them to the side. I don't want to do that, you know, but <laughs> it's easy because I can type, I can talk to you, um, but in journaling, you know, I'm back to journaling. I'm back to, Love journaling. My, I'm back to telling my story yes. um, and, you know, meditation, but I had to slow down on the meditation because I was getting these downloads. I was getting so much information that I felt like I needed to act on it. I didn't know how to balance that with work and everything else because right. that is a direct divine message from God. I'm like, oh, you know, jolly on the spot. You got to get on that. That's right. And one of my guests told me, she said, you know what? That's a two-way dialogue. You can go back to God and say, you know what? Give it to me in bite-sized pieces. I'm okay. not able to handle all of this right now. I'll, can you slow it down this, that, and the other? And I did it, girl. And he was, God was so gracious. Still gave, I love it, it. gave it to me, you know, because I get it in dreams. I get a lot of my information in dreams. And so I'm up and I'm writing in my book and all that. And I think I got to do all that. And you don't, you know? Yes. And then I was looking at myself. I said, well, do I have enough capacity? Do I have enough space? You always are questioning yourself. We're always challenging ourselves. Sure. But that is a good thing. That is a good thing because <laughs> it keeps me motivated and it gives me something to do. And I'm a Y girl. Um it can get me in trouble sometimes. And my mother used to always say, you're so inquisitive. You just have to know the why, the why, the why, the why. But I have learned to balance that. So I love the questions. I do understand that sometimes um, I block myself because I'm so busy trying to figure out why I'm supposed mm -hmm. to be doing this mm -hmm. that I don't move on it. Um, so that's something I've learned too, to sometimes, okay, move on it. And the why will come to me. Um, but a lot of times I stop myself because I was like, okay, before I do anything, I need to know why am I doing this? Da, 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 da. Um, so learning to balance things um, and hear those downloads. I, I'm like you, I get downloads all the time and it's like, okay. So the next question after I get a download is, what do you want me to do with this? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. then I ask for, you know, and when, and who's supposed to be involved with this? Right. Right. to help me so that I don't take, cause I will, I will take something and run with it all yeah. by myself. And, <laughs> and what I have found out, you know, uh, from maturity and life and everything else is that sometimes this is just information. You don't have to do anything right. with it. You know, that this part. is just, just this information and sit back and watch and see what happens. Yes. You know, so when I write it down, I go back and I look at it, you know, and I'm like, wow. Yep. That's crazy. Like uh, a perfect example. My daughter's car had broke down and I told her I was building an audience for let's make a deal on Wayne Brady. And I said, come on, put on a costume, get dressed. I said, cause you're going to want a car today. I said, you're going to want a nice car. Girl, she won that car. Really? Yes, yeah, she did. She won that car and a hard game too, where you had to take the ping pong ball and bounce it and had to get right in the hole to say, oh, Come. goodness, yes. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? So sometimes when you hear these things, brains, you're not hallucinating. Right. Unless you're on Air Wesca or something else, you might be. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, take it to heart. Write it down. Yes. You know, and with your vision boards, 
Do it yes. realistically. I don't do a vision board with all my wants and dreams. Sometimes I just want to be stable. Sometimes I'll put obstacles in the way. Sometimes I've got to go backwards on that. I use it like a roadmap. Yes. You know, it is a vision. You know, it's not a wish list. And so That's we right. really need to be careful with that and careful when people say, oh, you know, you can manifest everything. Yeah, you can manifest some trouble too. You know, well, we because it, because it's not just picking up what you say out loud. Um, so a lot of times what people are thinking in here is very different than what they're spouting out. Mm -hmm. So um, what's in here, you know, you can say all day long, I'm beautiful. But if you don't believe it in here, you're listening to what's going on up in here. And that's what's going to pick up. So we just got to be really careful. Um, I just, I, I love the, the the fact that the download, I think for me was the power of shut up um, and just understanding the power of words. Because as you can see in the last, what, two, three years, um, words have been used in so many dangerous ways. Um, and I think we're missing it. We're not understanding it's the words. We're thinking it's the actions. But it was what was spoken. Um, the actions come after that. But people are saying all kind of stuff out their mouth. And look what's happening. Yeah. And and justifiably so, thinking that it was right to say it and do it. You know, like you could just go up in somebody's face and just say anything you want to say. Right. Be disrespectful. What happened yep. to manners? Whatever happened to having some class? And there's a time and I'm place looking at a show. everything. <laughs> I had one of my guests on yesterday and we were talking about this profanity. Oh, I, you know, I don't care for that. Now, you know, the F word is one of my favorites, girl. I can, <laughs> I girl, I can toss it like a salad. I sure can, but I am not going to do that and diminish what I am trying to communicate to my audience. There are 7 exactly. million words that we can use. And I'm looking at this one Netflix show. I'm addicted to it. I'm binging on it. I'm watching all three series. But every sentence they say, it's got an F-bomb in it. And it just desensitizes me. Or when you see these television shows and, you know, I was looking at some gangster stuff. Ooh, it was good, too. But just how they kill people. Pop, 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 pop. It desensitizes you to that. Right. Yep. So what we have to do is, again, step away from that noise. Absolutely. Bring some beautiful things. That's like today. After I talk to you, I'm going to go out and work in my garden. Girl, I got weeds. I love it. Uh, you know, I'm going to do that. And I am going to probably clean out a cabinet, play some music, burn some incense. Just enjoy being in the present and get away from the device and all that other stuff. Oh, smell goods and music um, really changed the mood. I know I have lit so many candles up in my house, my husband thought the electricity was, you know, do you, need to, <laughs> do you need to talk to me about something? Let's have a conversation. But I love that kind of calmness. Um, I've always loved it. I don't, I've never always had it, but now I know how to create it for myself. So when right. I feel like, okay, things are getting a little much, even sitting in this office, I love the fact that you said something about removing myself from this space. It's my happy space. But there's right. sometimes when you got to remove yourself because the energy in here is, is all work. It's work, it's work, it's work. So Girl, you I was so bad. I, was, I, had, I was so bad. I looked down at my feet. I had cankles. Ankles <laughs> were gone, baby. I had cankles. I was like, what is this? I went to, and it wouldn't go away because you're ingrained, you know, and you're not right. moving. And so now I set my alarm. If I'm sitting here over an hour, no, I got to get up. You know, right. I open my office, you know, I open my, my office and studio door right out to my patio. I step right out there and just have a bottle of water and just really embrace it. Well, I'm so glad that you were here to uh, embrace this time with me and share. Absolutely. This was awesome. I love you, Lisa. I really do. And Brains, I need you to go in and connect with her. Tell my Brains how to get in contact with you all over the planet. So I'm on um, social media at Lisa Dove Washington. I also have my website, lisadovewashington.com. Um, I have a publishing company, Touch by Dove Publishing. I also have a crafts company that's Touch by Dove. So I'm all over Instagram, LinkedIn, um, Facebook, um, I think on Twitter. Um, but I'm really just trying to make my mark on the world, which is to just spread positivity. And like I said, the power of words is everything. So I make sure that on every platform that you find me on, I am kind of, um, I'm speaking positivity and, 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 and trying to grow people 
and myself. It's not just about me. It's about everybody. So thank you so much, April. This has been so much fun. Well, no, it's it's all about, you know, again, spreading the word of positivity, trying to, you know, stay from being under the grind all the time. The right. pressure. And that's what that's we do right. here on the Edge Brains. We be loving yes. love. Yes, yes, yes. So I need you to go in and subscribe. I need you to follow. I need you to like, love, share. That's how stuff goes. Viral brains. Don't get it twisted. This is not a competition. Okay? That's right. right? This this is sisterhood right here. There is plenty of love. room. Plenty of room at the top if you just scoot your fat butt over. <laughs> love it. I love it. <laughs> and I love you. Thank you so much, my sister. You are a jewel. Thank you. You too. All right. Bye, brains. Have a good day. Bye.